You're listening to The Big Picture with Edwin Eisentraff on WCPT 820. Okay, we are back, and as I said, I'm going to turn um, to David uh, David DeWitt, who is the editor-in-chief of the Ohio Capital Journal, who uh, has joined us from time to time to understand what's going on in that state. Hi, David. Hey, Edwin. Thanks for having me. Listen, I, I referred to Ohio right before the break as the land democracy forgot, and I that that may not be fair, but um, I, I keep coming back to this because I want our listeners really to understand it. Uh, you've sent 15 people to the Congress of the United States who were not duly elected. Their districts were ruled unconstitutional by the state Supreme Court, you know, and the legislature just ignored it. And now that same super majority, but not representative of the state is trying to get rid of citizens initiatives, right? Which, which, don't happen to be gerrymandered because the whole state gets to vote on them. What's going on? Oh boy, Edwin. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a mess as always. So as you uh, pointed out, since August, 2021, we've had uh, state Republican lawmakers, including both executive office holders, the governor, the secretary of state and the state house leaders defy a bipartisan Supreme Court majority to force Ohio voters to cast ballots in unconstitutionally gerrymandered districts for both the U.S. Congress and the State House. Um, the court ruled against them seven times, and they ignored the court entirely. So they've, in that instance, they've, you know, uh, flouted the rule of law, flouted the authority of the courts and the checks and balances, the very basic checks and balances of the American system of government. They've flouted the voters who passed redistricting reform by 71% and 75%. They've flouted a bipartisan Supreme Court. And they rigged the elections for themselves with gerrymandering. And it worked. They had a 64-seat uh, supermajority in gerrymandered districts previously. After the election, now they have a 67-seat majority. And this is a state, Ohio is a Republican state, but we're about like a 54, 55% Republican state. We're not a 65 to 70% Republican state, and that's the gerrymandering that they have. And this is a key component here with what they're doing now, because we are a 55% Republican state, but that means that... What they're doing, what they're proposing to do now, they're trying to put on the May primary ballot uh, an amendment to the Ohio Constitution that will raise the threshold for amendments to the Ohio Constitution to 60 percent. This is not uncommon throughout the nation that you have these supermajority thresholds and uh, mm -hmm. for amendments to various state constitutions. But in Ohio, after this two years of illegal gerrymandering and this consolidation of power, it would be extraordinarily dangerous for Ohio voters to hurt their own ability to hold these lawmakers accountable. I mean, what we've seen here is these Republicans standing athwart democracy Athwart history and even athwart Teddy Roosevelt, who spoke at the 1912 Ohio Convention that installed these citizen initiatives, referendums and amendment uh, powers of democracy. And now Republicans, they control every statewide administrative office, governor, secretary of state, attorney general, auditor and treasurer, as well as both the Ohio House and the Ohio Senate under super gerrymandered super majorities and a majority on the Ohio Supreme Court. I mean, with these lawmakers continuing to create extremist laws that polls show strong majorities of Ohioans don't want, for voters to relinquish their own last remaining check, the power of a popular majority of voters themselves, I mean, it would be insane. But that is what they're asking voters to do as they try to shore up whatever last remaining pieces of power they don't have a stranglehold on. So you're seeing them go after voters. And you're also seeing them go after the State Board of Education because they lost a couple seats to Democrats there and Democrats took control over the Board of Education. 
And so they're trying to strip the Board of Education of all its powers and give them to the governor. And then the other thing they're going after is the Ohio Elections Commission. They're trying to remove a lot of the authorities and standards for the Ohio Elections Commission. Uh, so because <laughs> the, the sponsor of that bill went on a rant in the legislature about how this is all a personal act that he's grinding because of an investigation into him that he didn't like. So you see this full frontal assault on multiple lever- levels just continuing to destroy democracy in Ohio in every way they can. I mean, I, I, it's just so disheartening. And I know that the Republican, I think she is still, but she's leaving, um, uh, uh, Supreme Court uh leader, the, the yeah. chief justice yeah, Maureen um, O'Connor. Yeah. said she was leaving in order to join the fight against gerrymandering somehow. And she said that, that the court did not have the power to enforce what was in the constitution. And that, uh, to me, that sounds like another citizens referendum that clarifies what the citizens already did to put in place power to enforce this provision of the Constitution, which, of course, the Republicans can't abide by. Oh, right, right. They can't stand by and let, you know, the citizens assert their right to have fair districts because that would ruin their gerrymandering. And then they wouldn't be able to pass their extremist laws that they've promised to extremist groups. Um, who fund their when, do the, when do the but, citizens of your state, when, when is the pain so great that they rise up because they're, you know, you're going to have all the anti-choice stuff. You already have, uh, because no one's accountable, you have this crazy corruption, whether it's through, you know, this ridiculous uh, uh, fake charter school thing that has been one of the biggest scandals in the country in your state, or, you know, for my whole life there's been uh, p- public utility corruption in Ohio. I mean, the quality of life in your state goes down. The competitiveness of your state for things like um, uh, corporate headquarters goes down um, when it's that corrupt. And when do people say, like, enough? That's a great question. And, you know, I sometimes I I very often wonder that myself, how much pain is it going to take? How much suffering is it going to take before people decide that they shouldn't just be voting blindly for party and they should be voting for the, the things that impact their lives and make their lives better and stop this pain and suffering? Um, I want to go back to what you said about Maureen O'Connor. Uh, Maureen O'Connor is a lifelong Republican, a prominent Republican in Ohio, and she was part of the bipartisan majority that shot down the maps. Ohio Republicans wanted to impeach her for doing so. Um, they talked about it openly. Secretary of State Frank LaRose even mentioned it on the campaign trail. And so what's happened since, she's being forced out of retirement due to age. She has said that she wants to get in on the action of bringing a new citizen initiative to the ballot to fix gerrymandering because it wasn't mm-hmm. fixed this time. Mm-hmm. And I think... I think, honestly, you need to kick the politicians out of the room and get an independent commission. Every study I've seen shows that while independent commissions aren't perfect, they do a heck of a lot better job than the politicians do when they're drawing maps. So I think that's what Ohio voters need to do. They do. And in David, Michigan, it made a huge difference in Michigan. I live in Illinois, and let's, let's be honest, Illinois is a democratically gerrymandered state. Right, not as radical right, as, as your state or Wisconsin, but it's a democratic jam. So right. all of us are better off, all of us, if we do if we try and make the map making less partisan and more reflect them in the way that gives the voters more power. Absolutely, I'm t- I'm entirely against democratic gerrymandering too. I'm against all gerrymandering because I think it's a fundamental poison. We're supposed to be a representative government. If you're manipulating things so that you're pay- the politicians are picking the voters and the voters aren't pay- picking the politicians, you are no longer a representative government. That's a fundamental attack on the idea of what American government's supposed to be. It needs to be eliminated, but I can't control other states. All I can do is talk yep. about what's going on here. But what's going well, on here is absolutely atrocious. 
Yeah, you yeah, have. Thing. I want to note O'Connor announced that she's going to do this citizens ballot initiative, and then Ohio is one of the worst abortion bans in the nation. It's temporarily yeah. on pause by court, but it's the one that forced the ten year old to leave state after yep. being raped uh, to get abortion care. On November 10th, abortion rights advocates said they are planning to bring a ballot initiative from citizens to protect reproductive health care. Exactly one week later, on November 17th, Secretary of State LaRose announced this plan to make it harder for these types of initiatives to pass. And I just happened to look up the stats. He wants to raise the bar to 60%. In Kansas, we all remember Voters protected access to abortion care. They did so with 59% support. Mm-hmm. But Frank LaRose wants us to believe that this is all coincidence. It, yeah, anything, well, it tells us that Ohio Republicans know that a majority of voters are not on their side when it comes to illegal gerrymandering and extremist abortion bans, and a host of other issues, most prominently gun laws. So they want to manipulate things so that only a supermajority can stop them. I mean, in other words, they feel like they can beat citizens by convincing 41% to vote against them, but not 51%. So they want minority rule again in another yeah. way. They, yeah. So of the party, by the party, and for the party, right? When as opposed to the people. Mm-hmm. But that, that I thought was Xi Jinping's thought. You know, maybe it's Frank LaRose's too, but it's not, <laughs> it's not quintessentially American thought. But even when, when, when um, autocrats, oligarchs uh, like Xi Jinping uh, get part one party rule, they, they find, as, as we're seeing all over China now, that if they push people far enough, they're going to react. And I think your Republican Party is pushing Ohioans. I, I know they are, they, they are still partisan and they're still Republican. I thought Tim Ryan ran a good campaign, but J.D. Vance is your senator. I don't understand that, but I yeah. get it, I guess. But um, but at some point, there's going to be enough distance between the lived reality of people in the state and the and the actions and the diktat and the words of the autocrats who are who are really ruling from a, a smaller and smaller minority when it comes to the decision. At some point, somebody's going to say. You know what? I, I'm not. I'm, I can't do this anymore. I I have to imagine. So what? What I fear mm-hmm. and what I see, what's happening in the data, um, is that Ohio, outside of the city of Columbus and the greater Columbus area, outside of everybody's that, leaving throughout the rest of the state. Yeah, we're growing older. We're we're leave, young people are leaving the state in droves. They don't want to be here. Uh, Your best talent is coming this. to my city of Chicago. There's so oh, many young, absolutely. talented Ohioans coming to Chicago. And I want to tell you, as a absolutely. Chicagoan, I'm grateful for every one of them. But it's not good for Ohio. No, I mean, it's just going to it's just gonna continue this tr- all of these trends. And you mentioned the education scandals. For 10 years, we've had education scandals. Hundreds of millions of dollars ripped away from public education and funneled to for-profit private schools religious schools and others. And what's happened in education over that time is that we used to rank, um, we used to rank like uh, around the middle of the pack in education. And now we're one of the worst states in education in the entire country. We're one of the least educated states in the entire country. I mean, if you look, uh, we're in the bottom 15, uh, of the least educated states in Ohio. And so, yeah, I would love for people to wake up and realize that if they want to better their lives and they want to better the lives of their neighbors and their families, they have to demand a government that is responsive to them and that, that does what they want them to do because these issues are, you know, the people are for, (laughs) Uh, good public education. We've had an unconstitutional education system for 24 years uh, since the DeRolf case in the late 90s. And the lawmakers have refused to do anything about the inequitable um, funding of public education when we all know that the biggest achievement 
gap in education is directly correlated to poverty. And not only that, but we know the best practices to fix that early childhood reg- education uh, before school care, after school extracurricular activities, giving students four, you know, three square meals a day, giving them well-rounded education with arts and sports and everything else. We know how to fix this, but we refuse to invest in it. And so when does the pain get enough? That's I swear I ask myself that question all the time because I see it and it's heartbreaking. One in five Ohio children are going hungry. We have 700,000 Ohioans in drastic food insecurity. We have... We have oh, we invested all this money in the natural gas stuff and the shale in the eastern Ohio. All of those counties that produced all this natural gas have lost jobs in the last 10 years instead of gaining all these jobs that everybody promised them. I mean, broken promises, failures on every level in every policy area, pain and suffering for millions of families across Ohio. You're exactly right. When does the pain get enough? Well, I, or, or people leave, right? Which or people leave, uh, and they, and which the educated you're free to people do. are the people with means. They are, <clears throat> leaving, you know. But unfortunately, well, get- there's a lot of people who don't have the means to leave. Yeah, and that's you know that's kind of tragic. Especially when a lot of these things are just very fundamental American values. These aren't even partisan values. Representative government is an American value. What they're doing is un-American. It's anti-democracy. It's not a partisan issue. So help me understand this, David, because, um, and I guess, I guess the, uh, you know, Tim Ryan campaign is as good a place to start as any. What, what do, do, if if these values are being um, uh, are, are what Democrats are fighting for, and you know they are in state after state, how does a Democratic Party have to organize differently in Ohio? What if you? I mean, I I know you're a journalist and you're not a political operative, but what do you see that? What is the state Democratic Party there? How are they functioning? Um, and and you know, I mean, I, I note the transformations that have been made in Wisconsin and Michigan with very strong organizer party leaders. Um, and I wonder yeah. what's going on in, in your state. Well, this is the first cycle that we've had with a new leadership at the Ohio Democratic Party. Um, unfortunately, you know, Tim Ryan performed the best and he still lost by six. Everybody else. Um, and well, the Supreme Court candidates on the Democratic side, they did pretty well, too, but they still lost, you know, similarly to Tim Ryan. And then the executive office's candidates, you know, governor and whatnot, they really got steamrolled. And a lot of that had to do with voter enthusiasm. Uh, a lot of young people showed up in other states. Young people didn't show up nearly as much in Ohio. As far as we can tell, we're still waiting on some of those stats. Um, but as far as the party itself and its infrastructure, there's a lot going on and a lot of people have different opinions, but I think you keyed in on one thing that I think is super important. If any political party wants to be successful, because it's just one of those fundamentals and that is organizing, you have to have really strong, robust, well-planned, well-executed organizing to be successful. One of the problems that Ohio Democrats face is that in order to have that type of really strong, successful organizing, I mean, they need so much money. They need a ton of money. They need more money than Republicans to even come close to competing with Republicans. And that is kind of an impossible situation because the National Party has basically written Ohio off, so they're not sending any money. And the unions aren't nearly as robust as they used to be, although they still do fund a significant portion. It's just not enough to compete with a lot of the pay-to-play special interest funding that Republicans have set up for themselves. So you kind of have this, you know, catch-22 situation where the only way to really be competitive is to have a ton of money. 
And the only way to have a ton of money is to be competitive. And they're kind of stuck with neither, you know? Well, I, I, uh, and, and that goes, that really goes to a problem. I think fundamentally, aside from gerrymandering, I think campaign finance is one of the biggest poisons in American politics. The role of money, the fact you can that thank the United States Supreme Court for that. You can absolutely, absolutely. thank the U.S. Supreme Court for that. Yep. Um, well, look, I, I mean, I don't want to write Ohio off. I really don't. It's a beautiful state. It's filled with wonderful people, and they definitely deserve better governance than they're getting. But um, Democrats have to do their job there. But, you know, I back when I was a very young person, you know, the, the, it was early in the, in the civil rights m- movement uh, leading up to the Voting Rights Act. And there were several states in the country where there where there was obvious, appalling, uh, uh, disparate, racist treatment going on. And they were in the South, and they, the Freedom Rides brought attention to those states. And the the anti democratic, you know, I mean the the uh, actions in those states led to the creation of the Voting Rights Act. Um, it may be that Ohio is a state that gives if we if we let everybody know what's gone on there as i say the land that democracy yeah. forgot um it may be it may be that you're the example that helps the country remember what it values and will give uh, us what we need to um, overcome the opposition of Republicans and of the United States Supreme Court to craft voting rights legislation that will finally make a difference. Yeah, I, boy, you know, I... I mean, it's hard to want to be really, Mississippi in 1964, yeah. but if, when it comes no. to voting, Ohio's pretty close. Na- but that national attention is key. You know, um, we really need it. And luckily, a couple people have done some really good stuff to highlight it. And I've I've talked to them as they researched Ohio. Jane Mayer from The New Yorker did a great piece this summer about the destruction of democracy in Ohio. Charlie Pierce from Esquire just wrote yesterday uh, about what's going on with this ballot initiative stuff in Ohio based mm-hmm. on a column that I wrote. And so we're starting to see a little bit of national attention, but we need a lot more. You're right to sound this alarm because this is the playbook. You know, Ohio could act stand as this is how one party asserts authoritarian power over everything. This is the playbook they follow, you know, and yeah, they tried in Wisconsin, but Democrats stopped yeah. them. Um, it's very right. close and they're still trying, but, but so far Democrats have held, but in Wisconsin, in, in Ohio, it, uh, Ohio is an example of what the whole country could look like, uh, should these autocrats prevail and be able to enforce, to enforce, to force upon all of us things that are not, uh, pop, that, that don't protect minority rights, nor are they popular. It's, uh, um, uh, it's an illegitimate kind of government and something that America mm, has not seen in a long time. Oh, yeah, no. And it it puts me in mind, honestly, and I, I touched on this in my column, but I want to read this quote because um, Teddy Roosevelt was a Republican, you know, and in 1912, he, he was running as a progressive candidate uh, against Woodrow Wilson and Taft. But he spoke at the Ohio Constitutional Convention about the importance of these citizen initiatives and referendum powers. And he said a a line that I think think he said something that really captures it. He said, I believe in the initiative and the referendum, which should be used not to destroy representative government, but to correct it whenever it becomes misrepresentative. Here again, I'm concerned not with theories, but actual facts and actual practice. It has been found in very many states that the legislative bodies have not been responsive to the popular will. Therefore, I believe that the state should provide the possibility of direct popular action in order to make good such legislative failures. Yeah. I mean, 
That whole line, especially that part about misrepresentation and not using initiatives to destroy representative government, but to hold it accountable, I think that puts in stark relief the exact issue that we're facing here. And really, it goes to the heart of what American, the American Republic is supposed to be all about, you know? Um, well, and, and right, so and because of gerrymandering, party. voters can't hold elected officials responsible because the districts are drawn so their votes don't matter. So it's only at the exactly. state level that you can do this, and that's why that's why uh, your your uh, your guy, Mister LaRose, wants to get rid of this power because it is a challenge. It is another power center that differs from the autocratic one that gerrymandering has created. Exactly. Yes. And they want to consolidate the last piece. They want to rip away from citizens the last pieces of power that they have. And and keep in mind, like their arguments make no sense whatsoever. They they claim that the Ohio Constitution is overstuffed with all these amendments from special interests. Well, that's not true at all. Over the last um over, the, over since 1912, when these powers were put in place, Ohioans have brought citizen constitutional amendments 71 times to the ballot. Only 19 of those have passed, and 52 rejected. Mm-hmm. In the past 22 years, 16 have been brought to the ballot. Five were passed, and the rest rejected. The citizens have been incredibly responsible with not overstuffing the Ohio Constitution. You know who has been? Ohio Republicans. They've been putting amendments into the Constitution. <laughs> Three times the rate the citizens have. And so their arguments for this are just incredibly deceitful and duplicitous. And they don't make any sense because they're not honest arguments. They're trying to create an idea of a problem that doesn't exist. And they're doing it very clearly because they're worried about the possibility of future success for citizens to hold them accountable. Well, David, that's going to have to be, I think, our last word because we're at the bottom of the hour. I, I just want to note that uh, the Ohio Capital Journal, your your uh, your news outlet, is doing a, a very good job of keeping the public informed about these issues. And um, at least journalism still uh, is is still operating and not, um, you know, it has not been challenged by these guys yet. Um, I want to say. Uh, Unfortunately, it's a full forever employment act for journalists watching this. Yeah. So, I, you know, you're going to be busy, but thank goodness you're there. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me on to talk to you about this stuff. Yeah, I appreciate really it. important stuff. All right, everybody. That was uh, David DeWitt, editor in chief of the Ohio Capital Journal from, as I say, the land that democracy has forgotten. And we need to do our bit to help them get it back. We're going to take a quick break, and then I'm going to turn to uh, election and voting rights more broadly with The Guardian's Sam Levine. Stay tuned. You're looking at the big picture with Edwin Eisentraff on WCPT 820.